My name is Jeremy Okai Davis. The title of the show, A Good Sport, is a phrase. I've heard it my whole life. I played sports growing up, so sportsmanship and being a good sport is, is something that's kind of hammered into children. So the term had been on my mind. At some point, a good sport and African American history started kind of fusing. And for a long time, I wanted to do paintings about sports because I had this history in, in sport. My dad was a coach and played basketball. I have an uncle that played. My cousin is a coach now and played in the NBA. So just, just a very like deep-rooted Davis history in sports. I wanted to make sport paintings that had something more behind it. So in thinking about the term a good sport and the history of African Americans having to basically be good sports and fall in line, it seemed like a good kind of fusing of those two things to make a body of work or bodies of work moving forward. There's something really open-ended about a good sport that felt like I could just really play around with that and kind of dive into making paintings about that for a long time. My studio practice has pretty much stayed the same throughout the years. I think the only thing that's changed for me is the research. At some point, with just going to the studio and just painting. I got a little bored with it and felt like I needed to do more for myself, but also for the community and for people. So my practice now and a good chunk of my studio time or thoughts with studio time is, is kind of rooted in that research and trying to make sure that the work that I'm making is important and tells stories that I think people want to hear. I've always been a a nine to five studio, get in there, paint. But yeah, at some point in my career, I started looking outside of myself a little bit more and wanting to tell other people's stories. Regarding research in my work, I'm typically inspired by photographs. If I see an image of a person that invites me to look deeper into them, I typically start there and then dig on the internet or go to the library or pals, bookstores, and find as much information about that person as I can. And usually that deep dive exposes other people and other stories, and that is usually the synthesis for a body of work. If I have enough ideas or enough curiosities about a person or a thing or a subject, I know that I can then create 10 to 12 paintings to make a show. The research side of thing is almost, I wouldn't say more fun than the painting, but it, it, it it parallels the painting for sure. Finding out about things, that, curiosities that I, I didn't know I had, it's always exciting. And then in turn, those curiosities that I have when I put them in the paintings and put them up on a wall, I hope that the viewers kind of get the same feeling from the paintings. And that life that I try to get out of the paintings, that's the ultimate goal for me, is to like make the paintings feel like people. And make people curious and want to look into their eyes and see what's behind them. Because I usually have that same feeling when I'm painting the people or, or working on a painting. So I want that to come through when people see the work. I mean, there's no doubt that when working or looking at a picture back and forth that you're going to have some memories that pop up. The people, the figures, or subjects that are closer to me, I think that comes through. But I try to humanize all the portraits, you know, and all the subjects. I want the same emotion that I would give to my mom or, or dad in a painting to come through and somebody that I'd never met. A respect for the subject. Having fun with painting. At the end of the day, like, I am a painter, and I love the way paint moves on a canvas. And one of my favorite things when I go to a gallery is instead of looking at a painting head on, I like to get on the side of it and look at and see what textures and the, the ripples and things that are poking out. So in the studio, I take that into a, a consideration quite a bit, the textures and looseness of the backgrounds and being okay with leaving raw canvas a little bit. I scraped away a lot of the initial stages and I loved how it looked to see the canvas kind of peeking through. And typically I would have tried to build it up, but I thought that leaving that raw canvas in juxtaposition with some of the textures created a really good dimension. I've done it in the past, but I don't think I've ever applied it to a full body of work and definitely not work at this scale. I mean, in these days of Instagram and paintings posted for phone consumption or computer consumption, I think sometimes the idea of texture and painterliness gets left behind. So yeah, that's a 
really big concern for me is, is making sure it looks like a painting, more for the viewer to take in, aside from the stories and the actual themes behind the paintings. I want there to be like a reverence for art history and just straight up paint. Before even skills, I think an artist needs to have genuine curiosity about subjects and things and painting. And then with that, I think the paintings and the ideas just come. Skill-wise, having the desire to experiment and try new things. At some point in my career, I got kind of stuck doing the same things. And it took that idea of experimentation to open me up a little bit more. The role that beauty plays in my art is really only surface level. Like I want the paintings to be attractive. I want them to look good. I want people to walk past a gallery and, and be attracted and want to enter or get closer to the painting. So that beauty and aesthetics are important in that way. But beyond that, I think I'm more attracted to really well thought out and fleshed out ideas. I never close the door on a body of work. Definitely when I'm working on a show, there is a finite ending point, but the ideas don't stop. I'll see something on TV or, or read something in a book that makes me want to reopen a series of paintings or a painting that can be applied to a body of work. So no, they, they never end in my mind. And this particular show, A Good Sport, the title of it was kind of made to be open-ended and able to be extended.